So 2024 is off to quite a start when it comes to movies. First we get Madame Webb, an all-time epic failure for Hollywood movies. And now we get Dune Part 2, an all-time epic sequel. A sequel to rule all sequels, one could say, pun absolutely intended, but more on that later. Back in 2021, I thought Part 1 was fascinating, full of ingenious world building and a sound design for the ages. Part 2 is all of that and more. The only slight problem I even had with the first movie was that the pacing felt off at times and it did feel like half of a complete story. Part 2 has no such problems. The pacing is much stronger now. The balance between action, character development, world building and general weirdness is far more consistent this time around. And with that, the near 3 hour runtime becomes sort of hypnotic and actually flies by. Acting wise, this is a big ensemble cast of major stars. So as expected, the performances are strong for the most part, but I want to talk specifically about Timothy Chalamet. I think he's surprisingly great in this. Like an Oscar win wouldn't be far-fetched, I don't think. He essentially has to juggle two very different performances. First, as Paul Atreides, a soft-spoken and well-mannered prince, a type of role that Timothy Chalamet as an actor is naturally well-suited for. And secondly, as Lazan al Ghaib, a prophetic, menacing and all-inspiring warrior leader to a revolution, a type of role that Timothy Chalamet is decidedly not well-suited for. Let's put it this way, when I think of frightening and inspiring leaders, Timothy Chalamet doesn't really come to mind. With that said, to my surprise, he pulled it off. I am Paul Mwadim Atreides, Duke of Arrakis! He plays Lasan al Ghaib with such tenacity and force that he willed into being the most terrifying performance of the movie. Mind you, a movie that includes Batista. How? A particular scene towards the end where Paul shouts the word silence sent actual chills down my spine. Consider what you're about to do, Paul Atreides. Silence! Zendaya also shines as Johnny, which is nice to see, because weird fashion sense aside, I feel like she's a legitimately talented actress who somehow always seems to end up in material that is beneath her. So it's great to see her be a part of a great story for once, and not in a Spider-Man movie or in a massively overrated HBO show. The only sore spot in terms of acting that I could find here is sadly Christopher Walken. It's not that he himself is bad, it's more so that he is horrifically miscast. Because whenever the Emperor shows up on screen, all I can think of is, why is Christopher Walken in a costume? It takes me out of the movie, again not crapping on the man himself. So he hid it. In one place he knew he could hide something, his ass. In the right role, Christopher Walken can be perfect, but in something like this, it just felt wrong. Rebecca Ferguson, on the other hand, picks up right where she left off in the first movie. The humanity of her character, shrouded in persistent creepiness and duplicity, is fascinating, and her intensity matches that of Timothy Chalamet's in a way that makes me almost believe that they are actually related. Austin Butler is here as well, playing an incredibly hairless villain. All I can really say about this performance is that pulling off a scary villain whilst being extremely, and I do mean extremely, over the top is easier said than done, and he succeeded. His fight scene with Paul towards the end is amazing. May thy knife chip and shatter. The simple brutality of the sequence combined with an uncharacteristic lack of soundtrack made for one amazing fight scene. It kind of reminded me of another great fight scene in another great franchise in a not so great sequel. On a side note, it was pretty hilarious how Fade Raka was introduced as a total chaotic lunatic psycho, but a single scene with Leo Sido was all it took to tame him. I don't blame you. So it's about time we talk about Denis Villeneuve. As a sci-fi connoisseur, I'm going to make a judgement here. Denis Villeneuve is the best sci-fi director of this generation. Arrival, Blade Runner 2049 and now both the movies alone cement his place atop of the genre. At this point, he could go on to direct Morpheus and Madame Webb back to back and he'd still be one of the best all-around directors working today. There's a great interview that has been going around social media where Denis Villeneuve said, image and sound, that is the power of cinema. I just thought that was incredibly neat how a single phrase can inform a director's vision in such a concise way. You could translate it to more technical terms, of course, 
cinematography and sound design. That is the power of cinema. And if that is indeed the case, then Dune Part 2 is one mighty movie. The cinematography is beyond great of course, and the one thing that I have to point out is that the cinematographer, Greg Fraser, is like Denis Villeneuve racking up quite a resume. He did the cinematography for movies like Dune Part 1, The Batman, Rogue One and The Creator. Now, I didn't like Rogue One and The Creator all that much, but the one thing that stood out to me about those movies was undoubtedly the cinematography. But getting back to the point, what makes the Dune cinematography so great is not only that it's incredibly beautiful, but it actually serves a purpose to the story, because it perfectly matches the alien tone of the movie. Dune is a sci-fi epic. Its story is supposed to be literally otherworldly. However, most epic sci-fi movies tend to forget that. For example, as much as I like Star Wars, let's face it, Tatooine just looks and feels like some desert on planet Earth. It all feels like it takes place in a place not so far away. I don't like sand. Arrakis, on the other hand, through the use of masterful cinematography and ethereal sound design, truly does feel otherworldly. As to make my point, there's a whole black and white sequence set on Gidi Prime, the homeworld of House Harkonnen, that is absolutely breathtaking. There's something off about it, you can't quite put your finger on it, all you know is that it looks amazing, it sounds amazing, but critically it does not feel like it's from here. It's exactly what I loved about the rival, the aliens truly felt alien. Instead of the overly familiar little green man, Abbott and Costello were remarkably unfamiliar, they truly felt like alien beings. And with Dune, Denis Villeneuve makes so-called alien worlds finally feel alien. So to conclude, is Dune the new Lord of the Rings, or the new Dark Knight, or the new Empire Strikes Back, or whatever silly comparison our brains want to create? I would say that, whatever it is, it's pretty damn great, and an actual masterpiece, in the truest sense of the word. The word masterpiece is often thrown around to describe movies, that are at best just good. There's nothing wrong with good, of course, but a masterpiece is not just good, it's a story that can create a profound cultural impact, and more importantly stand the test of time. Dune, I believe, is such a masterpiece. He who can destroy a thing has the real control of it.